It's the caissons of Brani Port. Such ideal conditions were predicted on the 20th and 21st of December 2008. These dates were so critical that if tasks were unsuccessful, construction would be delayed by up to six months. The process went through smoothly, with the placing of the utility bridge at Brani successfully completed on the 20th, with the placing of the first pier segment at Brani abutment done the next day. After the pile caps were placed, the utility bridge had to be installed. The massive steel trusses of the utility bridge were designed to span the 60 meter distance between the pile caps. The cross section allowed sufficient space to carry various services, such as sewer lines, water supply pipes, and electrical cables from the mainland to Sentosa Island. The bridge trusses were also fabricated at the McConnell Dowell welding yard in Batam and shipped to Singapore. The utility bridge comprised of five trusses, 60 meters long, each weighing 81 tons, and two trusses 40 meters long and 55 tons in weight. The structures are placed with heavy lift barges on the new pile caps in between the existing and new bridge. Construction of the bridge superstructure was done by segmental construction using the balanced cantilever technique. For each pier, the first segments, called the pier table, were erected. A survey is then done to adjust the pier table to the right alignment, crossfall and inclination. The main advantages of this type of construction are its speed and the need for fewer on-site activities. While the teams in Sentosa were dealing with the piling and foundation works, the first segments were cast at the Batam precast yard. By working parallel on these activities, critical time was reduced. The safety aspect also becomes clearer when we compare casting segments in the yard with doing concreting works over the waters, running currents up to 1.5 knots between Singapore and Sentosa. Then comes the erection of the cantilever. Seven more segments added on either side of the pier table. A full cantilever consists of 17 segments. Once two full cantilevers are completed, the closure segments can be placed and the in-situ closure joints can be poured. Finally, on 20th of March 2009, the moment everyone was waiting for arrived. The last segment was put in place successfully. The final external post tensioning is then run over the full 400 meter length of the bridge. Construction didn't end with this. The new bridge is not just a mere passageway. It's a gateway to an iconic attraction. This means it has to blend in with the surrounding architectural structures and not look out of place. And that was what McConnell Dowell team did carefully copying and replicating all the details of the existing bridge, while at the same time complying with the latest codes and requirements. The end result is a bridge complete with lush greenery in planters, fitted handrails and designed lighting poles. It's a bridge befitting a world-class destination. The challenges didn't end there. The extension of the existing causeway meant that the two existing monorail piers, located right in the middle of the proposed new road, had to be relocated. But as the monorail operations could not be stopped, construction had to be done beneath the existing track structure. 
Working hours were also limited between midnight to 0500 hours for the same reason. Road diversions were first created to direct traffic away from the work area. The foundations were constructed and the columns again made from precast were installed. Two girders are then constructed at ground level next to the foundation. A temporary support system is erected to support the girders as they are lifted into position. The lifting of the girders was a critical operation which had to be done by two cranes in tandem and only at night. The new girders were then connected to the new columns and ready to support the monorail tracks. The final step is the removal of the old column. To prevent any vibrations to the structure, wire cutting equipments are used and the column removed section by section. Throughout the whole process, there is no disruption to the monorail operations. The trains kept on running as per schedule and are still doing the same without any inconvenience caused to the visitors of Sentosa. The construction of the new bridge also meant that the existing pedestrian underpass over at Sentosa had to be extended by a further 45 meters. Due to space constraints, McConnell Dahl decided to combine the temporary and permanent works on the underpass by creating a Sikan pile wall. The underpass and its surrounding area were completed well within time, delivering another structure with high dedication to architectural finishes. The building of the new bridge and the widening of the causeway will, upon completion, increase the number of road lanes to and from Sentosa to three each direction. Inbound traffic to Sentosa will travel on the new bridge while outbound traffic will be channeled over to the new causeway. The new road lanes were gradually opened in stages. Careful planning of road diversions ensured that traffic continued to flow in and out of Sentosa smoothly. The roads were merged and aligned with the bridge and causeway before they were fully opened to traffic. The end result is a three-lane outbound traffic on the new causeway and three new inbound traffic lanes on the new Sentosa bridge. There was one more challenge that McConnell Dow had to tackle. It's an unusual one too. McConnell Dow was engaged to lay the foundation for a unique entertainment concept, the dancing cranes. Its arc meets construction as two mechanical giant cranes come to life and dance like their feathered namesakes. McConnell Dow built the civil works for this revolutionary entertainment feature. Construction was done out in the sea and involved the use of a number of barges for storage and ferrying materials and workers. Naturally, it required a creative flair when building what could be Asia's first dancing cranes. Approximately 170 tons precast bathtubs which were fabricated in Batam facility were installed in between the headstocks by the same lifting crane barge used on the bridge. After the civil works are completed, the structure is then handed over to the mechanical and electrical contractors to install the dancing cranes. There you have it, the complete behind-the-scenes story of how McConnell Dow successfully redefined how visitors get in and out of a world-class integrated resort set in an iconic destination. It took gumption, innovativeness and most of all creativity. The results speak for itself. As the bridge welcomed its first stream of traffic on the 8th of July 2009, a year and one week after the first pile was driven. McConnell Dow has, over the years, built a solid reputation for successfully assisting our clients find the right solutions to their requirements. Choosing for McConnell Dow means choosing for the highest safety standard and quality assurance. The innovative and cost-effective designs used in the Sentosa Crossing project resulted in a timely completion with a state-of-the-art end product, much to the client's satisfaction.